everybody welcome back to our part two of the witchy wood grain tutorial um, so I have my cup right here that's spinning I just epoxied these cups in the back um, I am using the swift poxy by tubler poxy um, I like to use the fast set for my first initial couple coats just because it sets up a lot faster um, and, and now I am a full glover so if you are a little bit messy, messier of an epoxier. I do recommend just using your full glove. Um, so this will actually be dry in about two to four hours. I just do a light thin coat and I just spread it right on here, make sure I get it all. So then our next step, what we're gonna be doing is adding the paint. So we're gonna be having the distressing effect and I just make sure I get it all nice and gooped on there. I will also link for this epoxy in the description. Um, I'll link my referral code. You can get a few dollars off of your order of Swift Poxy if you don't currently use it or you do use it and want a discount code. Um, this video is not sponsored by them at all, but because I just buy from them, I have the referral code if you want to use it. And so we're just gonna give this a nice coat, let it sit for a few hours, and come back when it's dry. So I did forget to mention too, um, I did, I'm using about 10 mLs on this 20 ounce cup of the Swift Poxy. Um, depending on the brand of epoxy that you use, I know some are thin, some are thicker. Um, I'd say Swift Poxy is kind of a medium thickness, so if you find that you have a little bit thicker epoxy, you might need um, a little bit more just to give it a nice good base coat. And then I like to just kind of go back over with my one finger on my gloved hand, make sure you're using proper PPE. Um, and then what you want to do is just take a heat source. I tend to use my torch because I find that sometimes my heat gun with alcohol inks, it'll actually start to um, affect the color of the inks because it heats up. And then I'm just going to pop any residual bubbles if I have any. That's one thing I love about the Swift Poxy, even though it looks really cloudy in this. Um, I hardly ever have to torch it once it's actually on here because the heat from your hand takes all of these bubbles out. Um, and I did this one back here with Swift Poxy as well, and I haven't torched it at all yet. You can see this ridiculous shine back here, um, but this doesn't have any bubbles on it at all from this design on here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this with the torch, and we'll come back when it's dry. So another fun thing that you can do um, while your tumblers are spinning is if you happen to use any extra epoxy or have any extra epoxy um, or just like to do little fun things with your orders, this is just something that I like to do. I hardly ever have any extra epoxy because I've kind of just nailed down how much epoxy each cup takes. Um, but I do make these fun little freebie magnets that I usually will send in my orders. So they look like this. Um, and then I just attach a magnet to the back and these are just something fun that I like to give with every order. So I just take my 91% alcohol and I spray inside my mold. And then what I do is I just take whatever glitter color, I'm actually gonna use glitter down south, um, sorry if this is really blurred, glitter down south lilac for these because um, I'm gonna send a couple of these purple witchy colored ones with the hocus pocus tumbler because I think I just love this color um, so we're just gonna mix up a little bit of that into our leftover epoxy right in the mold sorry this is an auto focusing let's see maybe there we go okay it's so right into the mold and then once you spray the mold with the rubbing alcohol um, if you've never used a mold before rubbing alcohol will actually pop the bubbles on the bottom and because this is the swift poxy this will actually set up in 
probably about an hour or two because I'm not using that much but it's just something fun that everyone likes to get with their order as a free little gift. Okay, so what we're gonna do now that it's dry, we're just gonna kind of find the correct placement that you wanna put your decal on. Um, now, if you have one section that you feel that you just don't like as much, or you might have messed it up a little bit, that's generally where I like to put my decal so then it's covered up. We're going to start with the um, Rust-Oleum Canyon Black and I use the satin finish. I just find that this works better for distressing. So then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our cup and then I'm just gonna find where I wanna put it. And then we're literally just gonna hold it about, I don't know, 20 inches away. Make sure you're not blowing it into the wind. And then you're just gonna spray a spot right on there and it's okay if you get like overspray because you're gonna clean it up anyways um, so then you've got your one spot on here then we're gonna let this dry now I tend to go a little bit wider with the black um, because you could, you're gonna distress this so then we're gonna wait for this to dry and we're gonna do the next color Okay, so then while I'm waiting for those to dry, um, or the black paint to dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how I finish my magnets. And I just use these magnets from Amazon. I will link them in the description. So I'm just going to pop these right out. They're relatively thin. Um, so then we're going to pop these out. I'm going to put magnets on them, and these are going to... Um, go as a fun little freebie gift with each of my orders. Okay, so now that our black is dry, we're going to go in with our green, and this one is Krylon Jungle Green. Um, and this is a gloss. I prefer the satin, but they only have the gloss in this. So then we're just gonna go right over where we painted the black. And my dog Ruger says hi. So we're just gonna hold this away. We're just gonna spray, not into the wind. <laughs> I guess I better change directions. We have a storm coming in. So then I'm just, you can always add more. So we're just gonna spray, spray, spray. And we have our green. Then we're gonna come back in and do our white when this is dry. Okay, we're gonna go in with our Satin Blossom White and I'm using the same rust as the black. And we're gonna cover the green with the white. So you just wanna make sure not to spray into the wind and then just give it a good shake. And it's okay if you go up towards the top because um, you're going to touch all of this up anyways. I'd re you'd rather have more than not enough. Okay, so then we've got our white done and then we're going to let this dry and then we're going to start our distressing. So now that our spray paint is dry, what we are going to do is we are going to do this distressing look on the outside and then we're going to apply the decal um, in this part and we are going to get started. So this is what the effect that we are going to look like. Um, and you're gonna see the black, the green, and the white show through. So let's get started. We are gonna take our cup, just like this right here, we have um, that we painted earlier. Then I use this acetone from Walmart. I think you can get it at Dollar General. Um, it is the Onyx 100% Pure Acetone. I found that this is this works the best and you have to use the least amount of elbow grease. And then we're also gonna use the 91% rubbing alcohol. And we are going to take two cloths, one for the acetone, one for the rubbing alcohol, um, which you're going to see that will actually 
turn out just similar to this one that I did earlier, which is in an upcoming video um, on how to fully distress a cup. So we're going for that effect. And so we are going to start with the acetone and just kind of work around. So let me find a clean spot on here. And we're gonna take our cup and just kind of lay it down. Now I prefer this push top one that you can just go right like this. If to, to me it's just easier um, doing it with this way than having the bottle that I have to tip up. So right now I'm just gonna kind of touch up all this like overspray. You can use the acetone and then go back over it with the rubbing alcohol. It really doesn't matter. It's a personal preference. Um, just don't go too heavy on it because the acetone will eat the epoxy. So then what we're gonna do is just go over here. I do suggest wearing a glove on your opposite hand, uh, just so that way you don't leave any fingerprints, anything like that on the cup. So what I did is I oversprayed the top and the bottom so that way I could cut it in and have this nice little peekaboo effect with the black and the green and the white that's going to show through for the decal. So we're just gonna go like this. And then when we get to the next part, we're just gonna take the rubbing alcohol. So right now I'm just kind of cutting it in. I'm just gonna kind of measure my decal a little bit. And I tend to use these uh, cotton shop cloths. I like these better than any other cloth that I found. I get them right at Lowe's um, or Home Depot, whichever you have. And they come in a pack, I believe. But I will try to find them on their website and I'll link them in the description. Um, so that way you guys can purchase them. I find that these have the least amount of left behind residue and then I just pop them in the washing machine um, every so often. So we're just gonna go through, cut in some more. Just kind of get the basic outline of it. You can see the green starting to pop through right here. We're gonna touch that up with some rubbing alcohol in just a second. Cut that in a little further. And if you mess this stuff this step up, it's totally okay um, because it's just spray paint. You can just wipe it off and redo it. It's pretty forgiving. That's why you wanna do it on a shiny surface um, versus a standard cup. So now we're gonna go in with the rubbing alcohol and what we're gonna do, just put some on the rag. I'm gonna get all this overspray. Just kind of clean that up a little bit and then just go in, a little bit of elbow grease. And Take some of the white off. This part does take a little bit of elbow grease, but don't use too much because you want that green to show through too. So then I just go in and it's okay if it does that, you can clean it up in a little bit until you get the desired outside color distressing looking how you want it to. Now that we have this all distressed how we want it, we are going to take our image and I did a clear water slide and I coated it a good um, portion with clear gloss 
spray paint, the Rust-Oleum. So we're just gonna put that in water and wait for it to set up. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we have a water bottle to spray on the cup design. Um, and I have this on my hand turner so it's not on a motorized turner. And then what we're gonna do too is we're gonna make sure that we also have a paper towel um, and we're gonna, now what I did too is with this water slide, because this is a curved tumbler, I made sure that I made a couple slits in it to fit around the curve, uh, so that way it, like, adheres to the tumbler just like this, um, just like this, sorry, <laughs> I'm changing my camera angle, um, so it's going to go over the curve, um, as well too. So we're just going to wait for that to set up and you'll know when it releases. I will also link my water slide paper that I use um, in the description as well. I get it off Amazon. So, and we're just going to wet this. So if you haven't applied a water slide before, this just kind of helps you move around the image once you apply it. And then I'm going to use our little squeegee tool to get all of the air bubbles out and all of the water out. And then I've got my paper towel, which is going to soak up all the extra water as well. Okay. So you can see how this is very sliding off of the paper. So then I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to transfer it right on here. And if all goes well see if I can do this on the first shot. Sometimes it takes a little practice to get it just perfect. So we're going to take our squeegee and we're just going to squeegee this right out. Sometimes I use my finger just because it's a little bit more pressure. Okay. And just go up and now when I cut this I don't do a print to cut I have an explorer too so sometimes my print to cut on my water slide paper um, my printer or my Cricut won't read it because it's too shiny so I just cut around the image as close to it as possible you're not going to see these lines once you epoxy over it as well and once you let it sit overnight too um, so the longer you let it sit the more it's going to adhere to the cup and perfect so this came out awesome so then I just kind of center it on the distressing. And now if you want to epoxy over this distressing before you put the decal on, you can. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I guess it's just a personal preference. Um, when it's an image as small as this, I don't really worry about it too much. But then we have our image and then we're gonna let this sit before we epoxy it so that way the epoxy um, doesn't go underneath the image and that way it allows all of the water around or underneath the design to dry and let the glue really do its work. So we'll come back when we're epoxying this and finish this cup up.
Um, I just went around, went around it a couple of times to make sure that it was all even. I'm going to take my, I think this is an 80 grit or 60 grit. It doesn't say on the block. Um, this is just a sanding block from Lowe's. And I'm just going to sand it just so we can get any imperfections out. And then I'm just going to go around the top ones just in case. And then we're going to do the bottom. And around the edge. And there we go. So I'm just going to take some 90% alcohol or 91% alcohol and wipe this off. Wait for it to dry. And then we are going to put the final coat on. So I will show you the finished product once it's done. So here is the finished product. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I will be adding more videos to this channel as well in the upcoming weeks on a few tumblers and um, options that <laughs> someone had asked me about or techniques. That's what I was thinking of. Um, so be sure to subscribe and like this channel for more videos. Again, thank you guys so much for all of your love and support on this cup that we made together and I can't wait to see what you create.